Whoa, semi-truck race fans. How many of those people exist? Well, there's got to be a few thousand because look at these images here. That's a full stadium. But maybe this is an event of a larger event. Like maybe it's before an F1 race or something. I've seen some of this semi-truck racing on like Speed Channel a long time ago. It wasn't really my thing. I, didn't, I thought it was interesting for about 10 minutes. And then, uh, yeah, just rally racing is better. Actually, this looks even crazier. I like that. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so we got this fantasy vehicle. I uh, usually don't go for the fantasy stuff, but no one else does either. So they usually end up in a bin for a, you know a discounted price, which is why I bought this. But I bought this, I think, last year in 2022. But I'm not sure if this is from a 2022 collection or not. This could be even older than that, you know. So if anyone knows, you know, when this colorway came out, maybe some people would be interested. It is called Rig Heat. It is part of the Super Chromes of number 8 of 10 in whatever questionable year it is. I don't know if this is like an international uh, edition or what. I, I can't decipher that stuff either. <clears throat> okay, originally it came out in like probably 2018. And then uh, I gotta try to get into the habit of crediting these people. Dmitry Shakhmatov designed this thing. And that's a super cool sketch of a. Yeah this racing-esque vehicle. All right, let's open this up. Let me try to guess what he was going for. I'm assuming that's a male. I remember of a Dimitri female, but doesn't say it doesn't happen. Okay, so we got a whole chromed bottom part. It's plastic, all right? But Something's cool here. I think this base, this black base, is very cool. So I think this is actually metal. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's a metal base. I'm not sure why it would, oh, to go down the tracks. I was wondering why they don't just make the whole thing plastic. But you need to have some mass to get down those Hot Wheels tracks. Well, yeah, it's very shiny. And it's interesting. I've never seen these wheels before. Uh, it's groove here. You know, the tire and the rim, and then they chose to chrome them. So that's quite interesting. And then the five spokes. Uh, he's got some sort of venting here, very much like an LMP car. Uh, I guess we should start at the front. Some sort of fog lights, I'm assuming. And some brake vent details. It actually looks like there's a crosshatch pattern in those little vents. This is uh, just a, I guess, under the cabin. I don't think it's an intake or anything like that. These triangular things. This is recessed right here. So this is lower than this surface here. So maybe that's a headlight or another intake. There's some uh, cooling uh, slots here. Maybe for it to go to the interior. And then I have a yellow cabin. And we got the chromed interior. A two-seater. Maybe three-seater. Yeah, it's actually a central driving position. Like an F1 car. I think you have the support crew there on the sides, so that's pretty neat. I'm noticing some molded in mirrors way up here, and they actually would be functional. There's nothing blocking the rear view. This whole black thing is plastic and poorly molded, it seems. There's literally a cavity right here, uh, a scratch, <laughs> and then I think this is another cavity here of some sort. We got some sort of fin antenna, I'm gonna guess that's what that's supposed to be. And then look at this cabin, it actually wraps inwards and then goes through. So that again is very much like LMP cars, uh, you know, using some side uh, barge boards and stuff. Or, so that's interesting. And then the back of the cabin, well, let's see, we don't have any windows. Is it, maybe that's the door to get in right there. There's a bunch of recessing up here, maybe to save on plastic. Uh, but maybe it's also to suck air out of the cabin or something. All right. So then we have a central uh, mid-mounted motor, and it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven-cylinder, or maybe uh, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that one. So that's an interesting one, a seven-cylinder. I've never heard of an engine like that, but maybe that has existed. It seems to be twin turbocharged, so maybe this is a 14 cylinder, but yeah, I guess that would explain why there'd be two verticals here. 
So this must be a 14 cylinder engine. Oh, maybe in semi trucks they do have 14 cylinder engines. I know nothing about them. So, so anyways, this whole surface is a nice diamond plate pattern molded in. It's really, really fine. I like it. And that way you can see it better, obviously. So then I would assume these two bulges here might be the exhaust, you know, or the shroud for the exhaust. And yes, they are recessed here, so one would guess the exhaust. We have a central wing, and then these wheel, uh, this wall of the wheel is actually a wing on the inside surface, so that's cool. Uh, maybe, well, I can't really see that. It looks like a diffuser. I guess that's it then. Uh, no, this this sadly doesn't go all the way through. I think they could have molded it that way. Oh, but maybe not. Because uh, then this child would step on it this way and break that metal off. And then eat it. And this is all hollowed out to save weight. So that's pretty smart. Obviously it's riveted, but it's actually riveted in three spots. That seems unusual. Alright. we got the nice raised molded in Hot Wheels logo there. And a differential here. All right. Well, I, to me, it's believable as a a, a real semi truck, like a racing semi truck that was purpose built for like Le Mans racing or something. So obviously, it's gonna roll well. It's a Hot Wheels. Uh, these wheels are the same size. There's no stagger to them. The front gap is much tighter than the rear gap. Yeah, it's just a tighter fit up front. It's a little, I think, almost scraping the body. Any other details? It's so chrome, it's actually hard to see the details. There's a panel cut here. Uh, I guess that's it. All right, well, hopefully I can find some interesting looking semi-truck racing wheels, uh, but we'll see what happens. Here we are guys with an experimental set of wheels, but in order, in order for me to explain what I was thinking, and my thinking might be wrong, I have to show you what normal wheels look like. Granted this is a Q bus here, it's a cute version of a real bus, but the wheels look realistic. So the drive wheels here, but I'm going to use the front wheel as an example, or the rear one as an example. There's 10 lug nuts holding this wheel on, right? And the heavier vehicle gets, the more lug nuts you need to have, because when this thing is braking, it's trying to shear off those lug nuts, the wheel. You know, the wheel's trying to keep spinning forward, but the bus is trying to slow down with the brakes. So it's trying to shear it off, and you need more bolts. That's why tanks have even more than 10. And that's why a light car, like, say, the first generation Miata, only had four, four lug nuts. All right, now, so a racing truck, you know, the lighter the wheels are, the better it's going to perform. So instead of having all these heavy steel lug nuts and bolts and stuff like that, uh, I decided to go to six, uh, and the reason why I can go with fewer is because these are not sticking out perpendicular to the hub. These are sticking out 45 degrees to the hub, like this way. So the theory is, when this thing is braking, it's actually forcing the wheel into the, the hub at a 45 degree plate angle, and uh, henceforth also if it should be trying to accelerate very quick, it won't try to shear off the uh, the nuts either because it's at a 45 degree angle but even uh, I compensated that for that as well you see these six points this like star pattern that is the hub uh, so that tooth pushes this flat spot of the wheel as it's trying to accelerate so it's taking the load off of the the lug nuts and the lug nut bolts and putting it on the six star hub uh, I think motorcycles in the back of them are similar in design all right, so yeah, in theory, if this is a these mounting lug nuts are at a 45 degree angle, I'm trying to show you the best way here because it's such a small model. Let me zoom in. All right, so right now, hopefully, you can see they're at an angle. But if I twist this here, now you're looking at the the stud and the the hexagon nut that's supposed to be on there. See, so that's the intention. So I decided to play it safe and have six lug nuts. All right, my paint is already stripping off. It doesn't really want to stick to this resin. Okay, so that's the the theory behind my my uh, wheels.
Whether or not the 45 degree angle here is correct, maybe I should have flipped them from this side. This is a mirror image, these wheels. And these are also scooping air into the wheel, you know, to try to cool off the brakes. All right. Uh, just some added paint, you know, black here, some silver, some black in those vents, a little silver for the turbo exhaust there and whatever the heck's in there. Uh, and then just some red here for the taillights and black in here. And that's it. Not, not much you know, else was necessary. Alright, let's zoom out and look at some other vehicles. Okay. Now, this is obviously not to scale, being a fantasy vehicle, but even if it was a realistic semi-truck, it's a Hot Wheels. It's not to scale. So, here's a, a Decatora from Hot Wheels, and I have some different... 3D printed wheels on that one. Uh, here's the Hot Wheels van, the Dodge van, and they just have some five spoke racers on these. Uh, what is this called, anyways? Yeah, it's just literally just called a Dodge van. So it naturally scales uh, there. Um, this was a Spider Woman liveried uh, delivery van, I think. What is this thing called? Well, that's weird. That's kind of weird, this casting has no name on it. I think it was called Quick Delivery, though. And so I have a photo shift Vallejo on it. This Dodge is way too small. Let's get rid of that one. And the Diora. This is a stock Diora that's got the Spectre Flame thing going. And just for a comparison to a more realistic vehicle, this is an X-Car Toys of a Chinese vehicle called something. The Tank 300. Okay. So naturally, the Tank 300 and these just, I don't know, it doesn't make, you know, maybe would it make sense that this would be a, there are K class trucks in Japan. You know, this is kind of looking like a K class delivery truck. Although the scaling of the windows may be too small. But these windows, actually, if you look at them, they're kind of tall, so it is feasible that this could be 164. It's just a really small semi truck. Maybe it'd be like, <coughs> I guess the only problem, <coughs> excuse me, the only problem would be the seats are, are too small in it. But if it was a single seater, that would be pretty cool. It would be a pretty cool racing truck as a single seater if it was like this small. <laughs> Granted, it probably would have a giant engine like that. But, uh,. Whatever. Okay, let's move on. Let this thing go for a last spin. Oh, I hate rolling models. And I'll put some post to putty in there later. So, yeah, it's a cool design. So, credit, kudos to the designer of this particular one. Must obviously like this semi truck racing. Wasn't really for me, but, you know, not everything is for everyone. But if you're watching this, you probably do enjoy Hot Wheels, and I appreciate you taking the time to check it out, and I'll see you the next time. Bye now. Race on.